Yo, what's up, Bulldogs? All right. I'm pretty excited about, about this one here. I know a lot of you guys are. You're calling it the uh, the greatest crossover, <laughs> better crossover <laughs> than Infinity War. <laughs> That's pretty pretty awesome. So I have uh, I have Matt Cross here from 33 Secrets. And uh, yeah, I thought we'd have a chat and uh, and talk about some things. I think we've got a lot in common in terms of, of what we talk about. Uh, a lot of people hate us, <laughs> both of us. But you know, you know, haters, haters. What, what are you going to do about haters? So welcome, Matt. Glad to have you here. Thanks. Happy to be here. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to talk about you know some of the some of the things. I think it's it's interesting, you know, because uh, you know I've been following your content for a while and. Like pickup is getting a really bad rap today. Like it seems like everybody hates oh the, those PUA guys, but um, I, I you know that's I think those are the, those are the things that really got me into personal development that really you know changed my life. And uh, I don't know, people have a very large degree of skepticism about that today. What what what's kind of your thoughts on on this whole kind of shift? Because it used to be like you know everyone was all the guys were about to pick up. Now it's like everyone's hating on pickup. But yeah, I mean, you're always going to have haters, but I mean, the way I look at it is I always look at those guys and like what kind of what kind of women they're pulling and what kind of lives they're living. And if I would actually want to trade places with them and 100 percent of the time, the answer is no. So, OK, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I guess, you know, maybe we could start back kind of like a little bit of your history, like what got you into this whole, uh, you know, this whole world, like what was, I don't know, did you have like a red pill moment where you kind of figured things out and, um, well, I mean, I started doing pickup and game. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far back as I, I mean, if I really want to go way back, I, I would say as far back as high school, I remember there was a club in the San Francisco where I was born and raised. It was called the Palladium. It was a pretty big club. That was like where everybody would go basically. And I had a, I had created a fake ID back then so I could start getting into the clubs. And I was like 16 years old. And right. I can remember as far back, even, even being in the club, I was just so excited to be there. I was so excited to be talking to women and it's just something I love doing. I just love interacting with women and, uh, you know, engaging with humanity and getting to know their story. And I mean, it really hasn't changed. I mean, the game hasn't changed a whole lot except for, you know, the advent of uh, like social media. That's probably been the biggest change in game so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I think, I think a lot of guys today, they say, oh, it's it's not like, you know, 2010 when uh, when you could go and, and pick up a girl. Now it's like, you're gonna get me too'd and, uh, and charges. And it's it's so ridiculous because I think the guys that are not out there, like I don't know, there's a perception of it. I, I feel like it's it's it to, to me. I don't I don't see that it's it's really changed a lot. You know, I mean, maybe maybe with the dating apps and Instagram, maybe girls have a little bit of a higher sort of value. Maybe it's the same kind of game that you might be running on on girls that would have been tens back then that you're running on eights. But I mean, I don't know. I I agree with you. I I don't understand why so many guys think that it's changed. Yeah, I mean, guys are always going to look for excuses to not go out and approach. So that's what I found. Mm -hmm. I mean, even as far back as the 90s when I first started actually taking guys out, guys back then had loads of excuses. And, you know, I mean, they're always going to have an, ex an excuse for not taking action. But, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you have to take action. Um, it's no different with dating or even business. Um, you know, now that uh, my business has taken off and I'm – acquiring other businesses, I realized like there's a skill set to it. There's a skill set to everything. Exactly. And it's really about learning that skill set. I mean, even in business, when I first started getting involved with business and entrepreneurship, there were programs I wanted to buy. And then I'd read uh, the forums about these programs. And of course, there's always people going, oh, it's all a scam and this doesn't work. And this guy's the biggest fraud ever. And I'm like, well, let me let me see what's in this program anyway. Let me buy it. And of course, I gain value out of it and I'd apply it to my business, you know, and I'm sure all those guys who were complaining back then are probably still at home complaining. So, I mean, you can't yeah. really, it's a mindset, you know, it's a mindset. Again, whether it's business or dating, I mean, you have to have that mindset that you can succeed and, and your brain believes that you could see, you could succeed. You know, it's kind of like that brain and lane. You have to see yourself succeeding because if you don't see yourself succeeding, you're just, 
you're just never going to go anywhere, you know? So you have to believe that you can and you have to see it. Um, I mean, really at the end of the day, your thoughts create your reality. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you on that. I like the analogy with business because, you know, it's funny, you know, I, I actually did a video just, it hasn't come out yet talking about Dan Locke and, uh, you know, Ty Lopez and, you know, I know those guys and they get a bad rap online as, as being scammers. And it's like, you know, I was telling guys like, just buy the course and see, because even if someone like you don't like their business practices, like there's something you can learn from everyone. And like, like these, you know, if you're actually willing to apply it, but it doesn't really matter as much as like everyone is kind of has the same information as far as like digital marketing and courses and, and things like that. It's, it's really not, not anything unique. And I think in, in, in game, it's, it's pretty similar too. there's no one that has this revolutionary game, right. But it's, it's the application of it. Like if you go and you study from someone and you learn some digital marketing, how to build a business, you if you actually do it, you're going to have success. The same thing, like you said, I mean, with game, it's like, if you approach, it's going to take a lot of, I think it's going to take a lot more work than most guys think. I think maybe that's where, uh, you know, a lot of yeah. guys, just, they don't realize that it's it's going to take a lot. It's like you have to be at a very high skill level to actually have good results. But yeah, yeah. I mean, with anything you try, there's going to be an, a, a learning curve. And initially, it's when you first get started. There's like this big learning curve in the beginning. And then once you start to develop confidence, that learning curve, you start to get over that hump. It just becomes easier. So, I mean, with a guy who's new to approaching, I mean, that's usually the hump that where most guys quit or most guys fail. It's like they do a few approaches and then they're like, oh shit, I got rejected. Yeah. Screw them. All women are bitches. They just want guys with looks, money, status. I'm never going to get anywhere. All this pickup stuff is a fraud. It's like, dude, you did three approaches in your life. Give me a break, man. Are you serious? You know? So, I mean, even with like business, I, I, mean, I think I went through probably a dozen business failures before I finally hit success. But I knew just because of the skill set I developed in game, applying that to business, I'm like, I know if I keep chugging away, I'll get better and better and better. I got to fail. I got to learn from my mistakes. I got to see what I did wrong and then tweak and make adjustments. And then eventually, you know, your confidence will grow and then you'll, you'll get over that, that hump, that initial learning curve, and then you'll hit pay dirt. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, yeah, I, I don't think guys realize how how much it takes. You know, I, I get the black pill guys hate they they keep <laughs> quoting <laughs> because I did this video where I said, you know, it, maybe when you're starting out, it might take 300 approaches to get one result, and that's really, I mean, that's not that bad. That's 10 approaches a night for 30 nights. That's, yeah. I mean, shit. If you could b get successful at business, do <laughs> devoting that much time, you know what I mean? And so, uh, and and it you, obviously you're you're you get better and it doesn't take 300 approaches to get a result, but that's, I mean, that's just how, what it is. Like, it's like, I, I didn't create, so then they're like, Oh, it's not the juice isn't worth the squeeze and all this. And I'm like, well, what's your alternative? <laughs> your yeah. alternative is to buy a sex doll. Go join the MGTOW guys, join it, buy a sex doll. And uh, <laughs> otherwise you got, you know, the game is what it is. Like you have to play yeah. it you know, how it is. You, you can say, Oh, well, it's not fair. I'm not a six foot, you know, whatever Chad, well, I mean, the job guy still has to, he doesn't have to do 300 approaches, but he still has to have some amount of game, you know? Right, right. I mean, yeah, welcome to life. It's like a lot of guys that I see that quit early, whether it's in, you know, with dating or business, it's usually because they, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a lack of self-belief and it's a, it's an unwillingness to push themselves past that initial hurdle, you mm -hmm. know? And I mean, again, I have to, I have to, I have to add in business as well as dating because I don't want guys thinking, Oh, he's just trying to sell this program again. He's trying to sell this program because I teach, you know, I teach business as well. And I see the same, I see mm -hmm. the same um, objections with guys I've coached in business with guys I coached in dating. It's almost like just this barrage of excuses and, Oh, you know, they have it easy. Oh, that's them. And, you know, it's always like some excuse. And it's just like, you know, if you spent, if you took that energy that you, you spend bitching so much and just applied it towards pushing yourself, you know, you might actually move forward. You might actually make some progress. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, we so, see it today. I mean, just like today, oh, let me read this super chat real quick from Chris Von Eric. Appreciate you, man. Thanks yeah. for the 10 bucks. Great show, John. Keep up the good work. 
Appreciate you. Uh, like your show too, as well. Guys, check out Chris Von Eric's uh, channel. He's got a he's got a good show that he does as well. But um, and and he has a variety of guests on there, like like from all, which I appreciate. So um, but but yeah, you know, from the from the business perspective, it's uh, people. Well, like we're seeing today with the GameStop shorting and the you know the whole thing going on today. So many of the guys and like if you guys are listening right now, don't get caught up in that shit. Like actually put in the time to build a real business. Like everyone's looking for this hustle. This is why this thing has become so popular yeah. because everyone's jumping on and they're like, oh, I'm going to buy GameStop uh, stock and then I'm going to make like 5X my return. And it's like, well, okay, sure. Okay, put 10 grand into it, make 5X your return. Then what? Now you have 50 grand, you're not rich. <laughs> Even right, if you put right. 100 grand, you make 500 grand. That's not life-changing money, buddy. Like, like you got to do some real work to put it in. But Everyone's looking for this quick fix. It's the same thing, you know, whether it be business or dating. They just want it to be like instant. They want they want to get instant results instead of actually putting in the work and and you know, they don't realize that life is a grind. Yeah, and there's there's no way escaping that too. I mean, you could you you could spend your life looking for the shortcut, but I mean, eventually you have to just realize that yeah, you got to put in some work. You got to put in some effort. Um, you know, and a lot of times it's not good if you get success early because then you get this false sense of confidence you know, and, um, you can't keep dishing it out. So, uh, yeah, it's about sustainability. So yeah, a lot of guys have asked me about that GameStop thing, by the way. <laughs> so, oh yeah. yeah. So, so one thing I, that I think is interesting too, cause we're, we're probably close to the same age. So you've yeah. probably been around for the whole alt fast seduction, you know, when it was on the news yeah. group, like the whole, yeah, I was on that forum. I was on that yeah. forum. <laughs> Me too, right? It's like so us old school guys. We we understand like how it actually like the history. Like it's kind of funny because I'm always debating with like MGTOW guys, and they're like, "Yeah, we invented the we you know." And it's like, no, no, like <laughs> you everything you know, all your whole philosophy came from the pickup guys that did canned game and that yeah. just like and, and it was like back in the day, you like you could say some shit, but if it wasn't validated because you hadn't field tested it no one pay attention to your ass. And, you know, it's like, it's just interesting to talk to someone else who has that history. So what, I mean, what, what did you see with that, with that hit? Like what's your kind of view on that, how things have changed? Cause like, you know, from the back, you know, Jeffrey, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ross was, Jeffries. Yeah. Ross Jeffries to the, you know, mystery method. And then now it's like natural game. And then, and now, now I guess we're in the, the game oblivion where, where it's like, there is no game, like deny game. De we're in the game denial phase now. So what, yeah. what did you see? Like, have we, have we improved? Have we learned what, what's kind of the progression that that's happened? You know, what, what is like this natural game even exist? What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Okay. Well, yeah, first off, let me address the, the, the fact of where like the actual red pill and the manosphere came from, because yeah, you're right. You get a lot of MGTOW guys and black pill guys and red pill guys going, Oh, you know, pickup artists lame. And Oh, you know, they don't understand the red pill. You guys have to understand the history first yeah. because a lot of guys who say this stuff are a bit younger. So they weren't around back then. And I'm going to breaking news here, but um, the red pill, the manosphere, MGTOW, all that originated from, the pickup community, right? Ooh, big shocker, right? <laughs> it actually originated from the pickup community. I'll probably get hate from that, but it's true. If you go back and do your history, uh, yeah. like John was saying, there was a website called Alt Fast Seduction. Uh, I was on that, uh, as well as another one called So Suave. Mm -hmm. I remember that, and I think Doc Love used to run that. You remember Doc Love? This guy named mm -hmm. Doc. Love. Um, but uh, that's where these forums started popping up, and guys were posting their infields. I was posting my infields on there. And then it started out really positive. Everybody was helping each other. And then after like a year or two, you started to see some guys just not really progressing as much as other guys. And they were kind of getting hung up on other guys' successes and attributing to their own failures. And they were like, you know what? This is lame. Screw this. And this bitch said this to me. And you kind of saw this faction started to, starting to break up. Um, and that's... I. I want to see that that was probably the, the beginnings of what is now like MGTOW because you saw guys who just started walking away from it. And it's like, oh, you know, what's the point in all this? And uh, they, you know, they didn't want to go forward and that's fine, you know? And then you had other guys who were like, no, this is great. Let's keep doing this. And so, yeah, that's where all that transpired. And um, I mean, even back then on those forums, a lot of guys were just 
pumping out their infield reports and you could see a lot of red pill knowledge about women's behavior and oh my god we did the validation vacuum on this chick her boyfriend of five years of right right there and she totally was like getting attracted so a lot of this was already starting to come out but we didn't have we weren't using that terminology so much i don't i i never heard anybody going oh this is totally red pill this is kind of right. just a new like colloquialism that people started using in the last decade or so but uh but um yeah, where was I going with this? What was the second part of your question? Oh, I was, I was, I was just saying about like what well, the history and then the like the natural game because oh, oh. yeah, it, yeah. It, that was became a thing and it was like I, I don't know when you go back like for me when going back I was like okay it's kind of a joke but I don't know I was curious your opinion on it yeah I mean okay so the transgression that at least I saw from my perspective because I started before like there was mainstream internet um, I was already doing game like literally I mean. If I really go way back to you know, my like junior, senior in high school, when I was sneaking off to these clubs, and then in college, and you know into the '90s, and uh, I developed a, like a very natural form of game. So I was technically a natural, right? I could walk up, start conversations with women, I could get them attracted really fast, uh, get their phone numbers, um, and I was able to like go pretty far with a lot of them, but I couldn't really hang on to them. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking for more of like a relationship back then. I mean, I found a couple and even those I couldn't hang on to just because there were fundamentals missing my game. But like most naturals, I mean, I had great opening game, mm -hmm. have no problem walking up to girls. Um, I mean, these days, I don't know if they'd call them that these days, but uh, you know, we would also call these guys players, you know, right? They would just have like really great opening game, but they, they couldn't really sustain that. Um, and then, around the 2000s that's when you saw this community start to form and then there became more of a structure and then mystery mystery came along all of a sudden he was posting all of his stuff and then he really formulated a structure with like canned gaming a lot of canned material just say this to her and then there was like a1 a2 a3 and then you transgress to c1 c2 c3 and there was like this formula that he created, which a lot of guys couldn't follow. I mean, I do see the method to his madness um, and I could see it working for a certain type of personality. Uh, but I, I really want to say that this is where the hatred for the uh, PUA, for the pickup community started because they started to, to attribute everything with mystery and right. this, this can style of game. And uh, that was something that I never really ever taught. I mean, it's like, okay, I mean, I could respect what he was doing and I, I took elements from it, I did that, but I was like, for the most part, this won't work for me or how I teach guys, it just doesn't work for me. But him and Neil Strauss, I mean, these guys are, you know, I mean, they're geniuses when it comes to canned game, but most guys aren't. But I wanna say this is where I, I noticed the hatred growing and it was mm -hmm. mostly directed toward that type of game and mystery. And so whenever I get hate, they'd attribute me to that. Like, oh, you're just teaching guys how to manipulate women and how to say this and how to be approach robots. And it's like, dude, I've never taught that way. And right. so around 2010, there was a little bit more of a turn back to natural game, but it was, it was more what I call like pick up 2.0 where mm -hmm. we got back to natural game, but now we have some structure involved and, you know, RSD came along at that time. They were pretty big back then and they put some more structure to it. And, um, and I've always had my own structure to it as well. So now we're kind of in a phase where it's like natural plus structure. I mean, because I start out as a natural and I coach guys who are naturals, but the biggest key that they're missing is that structure to their game. Um, they've got the vibe, but they don't have that structure. And I will, the way I teach guys is there's two fundamental elements to game. There's structure and then there's vibe. And the mm -hmm. vibe is basically body language, voice tonality, charisma. Um, these are things that are very, like for a lot of guys, they come very natural. Other guys don't. But if you have this, you, I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're doing well if you have this because at least you, you're already natural. And then you put some structure to it, and that's when you can take your game to the next level. And structure basically is having a structure, structure to your approaches. So I teach basically there, there's a five-step method to approaching girls that I teach all my students to follow, which is number one, the approach, which is basically the open. And then number two, the false time, the false time constraint, basically right. to let the girl know that, Hey, I'm not going to be here taking up your whole day just yeah. to relieve that pressure off of her. So her guard comes down. 
Because if she's thinking like, oh my God, this guy's going to, how long is this guy going to be here? But if you're like, hey, I can only stay real quick. I have to go meet some friends. Then she knows, okay, he just needs to say his piece. And that at least lowers her guard so you could do your thing. So the false time constraints, number two. Number three is building attraction. That's where we do negs, you know, little push pulls and stuff like that. Uh, the fourth, the fourth step is co uh, building comfort and rapport. And then the fifth step is basically close, whether it be a number close, instant date, pull, whatever. Um, the problem is a lot of guys, what they do, like most guys without training, what they'll do is if they work up the courage to talk to the girl, they'll like bypass all that and they'll jump right into comfort building. So they'll like immediately start building comfort. Like, Oh, do you like this kind of movie? Uh, <laughs> poor Ren, you know, Oh, you're from this town. I'm from there too. You know, yeah. and it's, now you're just putting yourself in the girl's friend zone. You're not, there's no attraction there. You're just really, I mean, she'll give you her number and she'll just stick you in her friend zone or you'll never hear from her. Right. Yeah. No, no that's very true. Yeah. I, I like that. And that, that is such a common problem. I think a lot of the guys I coach like in the, in my, in my membership, like on the discord server, we had this chat a lot because I, hear audio from the guys and it's like they're just too damn friendly it's like there's no sexual yeah. energy no sexual vibe I was, I was having them do this exercise where i was like i want you to look in the mirror and i want you to say uh, i want to fuck the shit out of you and then i want you to look in the mirror and i want you to say that's a nice dress you're wearing while saying i want to fuck the shit out of you you know like so that you're coming across that way and uh, yeah, I think a lot of guys just want it. They just want to get to the comfort. And, they, and then they, they do like a thousand approaches and they're like, I got no results. And it's like, well, right. yeah, you just came in there like a big teddy bear and gave all these girls hugs, made them feel all like warm and fuzzy and, instead of making them, you know, uh, building that tension. So, yeah, so I mean, all the guys who've turned their backs on game and pick up or quit after, you know, like a half a dozen approaches, I would love to just critique their, what yeah. they did and what they did wrong. And I can guarantee like 99% of the time, these guys just jump right into comfort building. As soon as they open the girl, like boom, right into comfort building, you know? And it's like, dude, you're, you're missing these steps. You, you need to, you need to build attraction with her first before you even jump into comfort. And it, even, even mystery taught that way too. It was like, you have to build attraction, then you go into comfort, you know, yeah. he had a different way of teaching, but I mean, that's basically the structure of building attraction with anyone. And then obviously you have to create that tension with a girl because you need tension to create attraction and you want to, like you said, to your point, you want to have that male to female type of conversation, not this friend to friend, polite, very filtered conversation where you're managing uh, the impression of yourself. Instead, you know, you want to really vomit your personality on a girl and let her experience you as I've been teaching lately. It's like, guys, I, the problem I see with these guys instead is the girl, they're experiencing the girl, but the girl is not experiencing them. So right. that's why when, after the guy's done talking, she's like, okay, piss off. I don't know you. Who are you? I don't care. You know? Exactly. He's just trying to do things in order to get the reaction that he thinks that, you know, get the response that, that he wants from her instead of actually being himself, like to, to a degree. I mean, I hate right. to say like be yourself. Cause that's, it, it's like, be the best version of yourself, be the version of yourself, the sexy version of yourself that a girl's going to like. Which, yeah. which kind of brings me up to the the other thing I, w I want to address to like the other side of what like pick up getting a bad rap, which mm -hmm. is that a lot of times I'll talk to women and they'll see like, you know, the some of the content and they're like, oh, I can't believe you teach guys that stuff. And it's like, <laughs> well, you know, and, and I and I, you know, your content is, is similar. I, I think we have a similar viewpoint is in the, you know, I always tell guys like leave a girl better than you found her, like in the sense that like. You know, I, I tell girls a lot of time, I'm like, look, what I'm teaching guys is I'm teaching, I'm be, I'm making guys that you actually want. <laughs> like I, I'm teaching yeah. guys to become high value, high quality men, to have good social skills, to be that guy that you hope talks to you, as opposed to the guy that's talking to you that you're like, fuck, when is this guy going to get out of here? Like yeah. this guy's so lame. Why doesn't he just make a move? Why doesn't he kiss me? He's so uh, shy. He's so like uns unsure of himself. And it's like, you know, we're building up guys that it's not this, that sleazy. I think there's like the sleazy kind of like, you know, viewpoint that a lot of people have where it's like, I don't know. I mean, and, and I think there's a degree of that. But when I look at your content, you know, the content that I'm I'm creating, we're, you know, and again, you can disagree if you if you if you disagree. But uh, I, I feel like we're, we're teaching guys how to become better men. And by virtue of that, we're actually providing a service for women because there's a lot of pussy guys out there. And oh, yeah. I don't have a lot of good selection. 
Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, without a doubt, uh, you know, sometimes people like I, I check the comments and some people are like, that's so creepy. You're teaching these guys, you know, game and how to do this and pick up. And I'm like, you know, what's even more creepier than that? A guy who doesn't learn pick up in game, because that's the guy who's buying you free drinks. Right. That's the guy who's stalking you. That's the guy who's like texting you mass texting you dozen times a day. You know, even though he hasn't heard from you, you're trying to ghost him. He keeps messaging you. He keeps showing up at your door. You know, that's that type of guy who has not had any training yet, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I've always said like, this is absolutely, in my opinion, this is the best form of male self-development that any man yep. can take in, right? I mean, cause it pushes you. I mean, walking up to a girl that you don't know, especially one that's more attractive that is, you know, quote unquote out of your league. I mean, that takes some serious balls. And then to be able to walk up to her and hold a conversation with her without giving off any vibes that you're trying to qualify yourself or validate yourself to her. It, it takes skill, you know, it takes skill. Um, a lot of guys ask me like, how do you know when you've achieved mastery? How do you know when you achieve mastery? I'm like, when you can walk up to a nine or 10 dime piece, like drop dead gorgeous woman and just be normal yeah. and not feel any need to like, you know, like, Ooh, you know, I gotta give, I, I need to, I need, I need you to give me positive feedback. Like so many guys do. It's like, no dude, you can just walk up. You don't need her for anything. It's like, you're just there. And you're almost like Zen, you know? Yeah. And once you develop that skill in life, I feel like, you know, at least for me, I don't know, like when it was terrifying for me when, when I was younger. And then I remember when I had mastered that skill, I was like, everything else seemed easier in life. I was like, that's what probably got me into business and to doing a lot of things was because I had that mindset. Now I was like, okay, well, if I can overcome this, you know, the most terrifying thing in, in, in my life, and a lot of guys don't want to admit that, but it is the most terrifying thing for a lot of guys in their life then everything else kind of seems easier. And then it was like, and it's also, you know, I, I think like you're saying about like, you could get girls, you couldn't keep them most because you were like, you know, at that point we, in our maturity, we are representing something that we're not yet. And then we got to go back and figure out how do we become actually that guy that someone would call an alpha male. I, I don't particularly like the term, but it's like, sure. you have to actually become the guy that's worthy of it. Like to develop yourself, to actually develop, like build your finances you know, build your physique, do, you know, do the things that, that make you actually that masculine man that a woman is going to be attracted to in the long term and, and, and isn't needy, isn't uh, looking for validation and approval. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the great thing about game. It just teaches you all of those just key skills that I, I really haven't found. And I read a lot of books on self-development. I really never found another form of self-development to really take the place uh, you know, to like teach me the skills that I learned from infield cold approach. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, that's taught me the most valuable skills and um, it's really helped me like build, you know, a successful business as well. And just, you know, really, it just really gives you that like social calibration, the social acuity and the social awareness of like a really hot girl. Almost. It's like, you almost like take on the persona of like a really hot girl where you under, you like, you understand yeah. like, so those, you know, you just have that base level social awareness. I'm going to throw this up here. Uh, Zub, thanks for the super chat, but I'm not going to answer this because it's not the, you know, if you want to guys ask a question about, about what we're talking about, you know, I don't want to derail us from the topic. So, so here's one thing that I want to talk to you about too, as well, you know, gone again with age, right? Because there's a lot of guys, even in the red, I mean, definitely in the black pill space, right? But even mm -hmm. a lot of guys in the red pill space, they're like, oh, they have like the sexual market value chart and they're like, all right, well, you know, the, the myth of like, as you get older as a guy that you're more valuable, that's myth. That's, that's bullshit. Because if you were younger, they would still prefer a younger. Now, what's, what's your experience on this? Because I know for a fact that yeah. younger girls prefer older guys. Not, not only it's like, just because you have more status or money or, or any of those things or because you're a sugar daddy, but a majority of younger girls prefer guys that are, you know, I've talked to, I've debriefed a lot of girls, like a lot of girls are like yeah, 35 and above, to be honest with you. I wouldn't want to tell my friends that, but that's what I'm looking for. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can think back when I was in my twenties, I was able to get girls my own age, like who were also in their twenties, but there were a lot of girls also that were, that I couldn't get because they did want to date older guys. And even when I was able to convince them to go out on a date with me, they kind of just be like, yeah, you're not really what I'm looking for. I mean, I, re I remember specifically girls 
literally telling me on dates back in my 20s, uh, they would be like, yeah, I'm just looking for a guy who's more stabilized in life. And you're just kind of like still like trying to figure things out. I mean, I got that speech from girls my age. Oh, and yeah. uh, I remember hating on them because they were dating guys like 10, 15 years older. And I'm like, what's wrong with you, girl? I can you be your dad? You know, and now I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's like now that I'm older, it's I'm get I'm still getting the same like the same crop of younger girls that I did when I was younger. Right. And and of course, there's always going to be those few that don't want to date in a, a guy who's older, and that's okay. Sure. Yeah, and usually those type of girls are the type of girls I wouldn't want to date anyway because they're immature and they want they need they need like a boy toy and they're they're just you know they're just not very mature yet so it's like that's okay yeah you go you date you date those younger guys that's okay I'm looking for girls who want to date older guys I'm not I don't care about you if you you know if that's not what you want that's good exactly yeah and there's there's plenty of a number and it's uh, it, it's it's interesting just that that you know and the reason why I bring this up a lot for guys is because. I feel like I get a lot of, I don't know if you get a lot of emails. I get a lot of emails from guys that are like in their twenties and they're like, man, my life is over. I'm a virgin. I'm like, and I'm like, well, okay. I mean, obviously learn some game. You can have some success, but really like your sweet spot is going to be when you're in your thirties. Like when you hit 35, like just start building your life up to that point. Start making some money, grinding, get to the gym. You know what I mean? Learn game, get to your social skills. But then when you hit like maybe 35 or so, well, all, all the other guys that are in their 30s are, are, are fat and, and ugly and, you know, and like and losers. Like you're this successful guy that understands game and, you know, understands the nature of women. You're going to just you're going to be able to get all those girls you couldn't get right now when you're you're 20 something years old. Uh, I don't know. Do, do you do you get a lot of that? Do you what do, what do you think about that? Uh, that advice or. Um, you mean as far as like guys who are, you know, who are like still who are still like virgins into their twenties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that they're complaining, you know, I, I guess like, what do you think about telling guys that they're going to be better when they're in their thirties? So work towards that future, as opposed to worrying about the immediate right now, not that, you know, yeah. I, I, you can still work on some things, but. Yeah. I mean, if they're not where they want to be right now, especially if you're in your early twenties, that's when you're supposed to be figuring things out. That's when you're supposed to be like finding your life purpose and then getting on your grind and, you know, building, building up some money um, and just kind of, you know, just, just becoming a man, you know, that's what your twenties are for. Um, yeah. I mean, I kind of pissed on my twenties. I just spent my, most of my twenties, I felt like I just spent it like partying and gaming, you know, and, uh, and then I, I woke up and I was 30 one day and I'm like, Oh shit, I'm kind of a loser. <laughs> yeah, I, need to find, I need to do something. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's important that, yeah, you find what's, what you're here to do and get on that grind and just start socializing with people. A lot of these guys, I tell them, you know, your biggest problem is you don't go out. You know, it's like, dude, go out, leave your house. You know, yeah. you have to get out there and interact with humanity that you're just going to meet people. I mean, even when I'm not doing pickup or game, um, I run an entrepreneurs group in Los Angeles. And it's like, even at that, we get people coming in. Sometimes they bring their friends. And I've met women through that, you know, it's like you have to go out and socialize and get involved in hobbies that that pertain to you, that are important to you. And you're going to meet people, you know, you're, yeah. you're just going to naturally meet people. So, yeah, yeah you can't, I mean, nothing's going to happen when you stay home. Put it that way. Yeah. 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 A lot of people just just watch content on YouTube I and mean, it's, it's great watch some content. But, you know, I have the 70 30 rule where I say you should produce 70 percent and, and consume 30 percent. And it's, it's also, you know, taking action kind of counts as, as well within that, that producing part. But uh, the other thing, you know, that I, I noticed also by your channel. So you've got, so in fact, some of your most popular videos, which this, this just is the thing on the internet too, is it's like where you're talking about older women, right? That's like the, you know, the wall and stuff like that. And, you know, again, the impression I get from you. So there's some guys that you'll watch their content and they'll talk about the wall and they'll talk about women and they'll talk about women as if they hate women. And they do hate women. I think that it's, you know, and it's like, I don't get that impression from you. I get the impression that you love women. Right. But you're you're telling the truth. So what do you think about like, I don't know, there's a lot of guys here. I think this young generation, especially I'm seeing these kind of, you know, women hating type of culture develop here online in, in guys yeah. and it's to me it's very counterproductive because it's going to seep through in every interaction you have with a girl if you're like secretly yeah. 
women. Uh, what do you think about that? And and what you know, what what's kind of the the cure to this? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's like so much a cure to it because I mean, especially if these guys, if they're you know, say they're around our age, so they've kind of been around you know, they've been around the uh, rodeo for a while. So I can understand their point. Like maybe they got divorce raped, they kind of bought into the blue pill a little too much. They kind of bought into the the social narrative, like oh, you got to treat women like this, and then they totally got their asses handed to them. Maybe mm -hmm. they lost custody of their kids, might have lost their homes. And their wives, who they trusted, you know, for you know decades, just turned on them and divorced them. So I can understand where they're coming from because you know they've kind of been kicked in the balls. And it's like, okay, yeah. I get it, I get it. But for the younger guys, it's like, yeah, come on, man, you haven't really experienced enough yet. You, you got to get out there and you got to at least give yourself a chance and you know meet some girls and um, and really have your own experiences and don't just you know don't just take it take these guys' perspectives because they screwed up. I mean, learn from what they did wrong and then apply it to your own life. Um, so, I mean, with my content, when I, you know, when I like talk about like older women or single mothers or anything like that, um, I'm just coming from the perspective of where, I, I mean, I do have a certain amount of uh, like younger women who follow me in their 20s. I get yeah. messages from them all the time. They're like, wow, I never thought, I never thought like, Wow, that never dawned upon me. I was like totally headed towards being that old lady that you're talking about. And yeah. they're like, oh, I, I should totally like focus on finding a high value guy because I, I want to have a family, you know. So they're not being fed this information either by the mainstream. So they're kind of missing out. So I have female subscribers in their 20s who are following me. And really, the only people who hate on me that are like the women who are already over 30 or 40. And they're like, screw you. And no, uh, you're my age too, mister. And uh, you know, and all this other stuff. But, um, but mostly it's a warning for those younger girls because I mean, really, uh, I mean, we can't get back to normalcy until we start rebuilding families, we start rebuilding men, and it's not gonna happen with women staying, you know, pursuing their corporate careers and staying single into their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and then just getting bitter once they hit the 30s going, hey, what happened to all these high value guys? They're not here anymore. And it's yeah. like, oh, you missed the window. So in many ways, I'm trying to warn like the younger generation of women, like, you know, hey, don't miss your window, girl, don't miss it. You know, and at the same time, explaining to, you know, men um, of all of all ages that, hey, this is, these are the type of women that you wanna be aware of. You know, there's a reason why they're still single and over 30, because all the hot, good, attractive women that I remember I grew up with, those chicks were married like before 25. Guys were lining up to snatch those chicks up. You know, and they were good, and they're still married to this day. And it's like I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But the yeah. chicks who rode the carousel and you know, kind of like pursue the corporate career. Now those women are like our age, and you know, and it's they're they're growing more and more angry and resentful towards men. You know, and so it's, it's sad. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, and I, and I I like your approach to it because, like I said, it it's a very like this is just a facts approach as opposed to oh, you know. You know, like I said, there's that animosity, that anger towards towards women, towards society. You know, it's a victim mindset. Like there's so many guys have the right. victim mindset. All right. So here, here's a good one for you. I don't want to name any names here because I don't like to, you know, I, I don't like to call out people or bash people. But I, I but I like to talk yeah. about ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some ideas are bad ideas, right? So l l let's talk about uh, the uh, choosing signals. <laughs> what are your thoughts on choosing signals? Choosing signals. Okay, well, you know, I hear a lot about this from, you know, some guys in the manosphere and, you know, to each his own. Uh, my experience from doing pickup and infield approaches, I mean, really my entire adult life, and that's what I am. I'm a cold approach pickup artist, so I go out and I experience women. There's really three types of women that you'll ever come across out there. There's yes girls, maybe girls, and no girls. Mm -hmm. Most of the girls you come across are going to be no girls or maybe girls. Right. And really, the, the point of game is turning them from no and maybe girls into yes girls. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you're just turning them into buyers pretty much. I mean, it's it's no different if you're working for a, you know, selling cars on a dealer lot. Most of the people who come in are not going to be like, yep, that one. Where do I write the check? I right. mean, every once in a while, you'll get that. They'll like, they know what they want. Oh, cool. Just sign the paperwork. Done. But most of the people who come on need to be convinced. They need to be sold. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the no and maybe girls, I mean, I could think of the hottest girlfriends I, I ever had. 
even the hottest girlfriend, uh, the hottest girls that I that I dated through cold approach, not a single, not any of them were ever yes girls. None of them were yes girls. The ones that were pretty easy, yeah, they were yes girls. The ones that I, you know, I wasn't really crazy about, they were okay looking. Yeah, they're yes girls. You come across that from time to time, but you're not really going to really get the cream of the crop. I mean, it's just like, um, like business ideas. I mean, it really, you know, I mean, there's tons of business ideas out there, but I mean, most of the good ones, you're going to have to put some effort into. You're going to have to put some work towards. So, um, yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts on that. Yeah, course, no, I, I, right. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's, it's interesting. I, I like that you, you mentioned that too, because that's really what game, because people are trying to find what game is and you know, there's different definitions of it, but, I, but, but that definition kind of what you gave there, which is because a lot of guys will say, Oh, there's no such thing as game. It's just a numbers game. And so cold approaching is just a numbers game. Right. That's true. If you don't have any game, you could just cold approach women and, and you know, you'll find all the yes girls, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's like, yeah. But like, to truly have skill, like the skill of having game, is that you're converting maybes and nos, and so the v- advantage of having game is that it's it's that now you're you have a higher amount of prospects than than you would just relying on choosing signals, which just the yes girls are giving you, and 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 I think that's the real value because I think a lo- again, like a lot of guys are like, ah, there's no such thing as game. It doesn't. It's just it just seems like there's game because if you approach a lot of women, you're eventually going to get some yeses. But the answer is that no, it's if you're good, you're you're converting maybes and nos into yeses. Right, right. And and just from going out, you're gonna meet girls from time, like I said, from time to time that are just gonna be these what I call gimmies. You just mm-hmm. happen to be standing in the right place at the right time. Girl walked out, she saw you, she was bored. You come with me. You know, I mean I've had that too, but it doesn't happen all the time. It's like right. every once in a blue moon, you're just in the right place at the right time. But I don't consider those like choosing signals or, you know, if I if a girl is like in the right mood, maybe she just watched Titanic or The Notebook and now she's at the club and she sees you and like, shit, you look like Jack, you know, and it's like you're the one. You know? I mean, to me, that's not really choosing signals. It's just like, hey, you know, I mean, I got a little lucky here. I got a little lucky. You know, every once in a while, everybody throws sevens, but um, you have to develop a skill set. I mean, the more skills you have the higher closing ratio will be the more, I mean, yeah, you're, I don't, it's an, it's a numbers game to a certain degree. When you have more skill, obviously your closing ratio will go up dramatically. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I think if it is, I mean, like I really like to compare a lot of life to poker. There's actually a really good book by Annie Duke called thinking and bets. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, in the book, she outlines, you know, one of the lessons you learn in poker, which is that it's luck and skill. It's right. like, and, and it's a balance of the two. And the higher your skill is, the more that you'll be able to utilize that luck. But, you know, sometimes you're going to make a bad play and you're going to get lucky and win the pot because you just happen to get dealt, you know, a full house or whatever. You, you know, you're going to win no matter what you bet. And, and sometimes you're going to make a perfect play. You're going to play perfectly and you're going to lose because that's just how, you know, the luck factor goes. But the, right. but the skill level determines, you know, in the, in the long game, you, your skill level determines your, your outcome, your EV. But yeah. so uh, another thing kind of related, what about this whole thing about, uh, about looks, right? So it's, it's really, you know, again, I get frustrated with the black pill guys because they're, they're so gloom and doom and thinking yeah. that it's, it's only looks. And, and again, I'm, I'm realistic, you know, saying that of course looks matter, especially on online dating, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. okay. You know, but what, you know, what do you think about the emphasis? How valuable are looks? Where is it like the whole looks money status? Where do you kind of sit on that? You know, especially, you know, I'm talking to the guys here, maybe we can help them out that feel that have been kind of brainwashed to this black pill mentality. And they're like, no, everyone else is lying. It's just like, there's, a, we have the scientific proof of the jawline. Yeah. I can tell right. you it's this and we did Tinder yeah. experiments and it's this. What do you, <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, you know, I mean, looks, they're definitely not going to hurt you. I mean, they will help you get in the door. Um, But I mean, I've had guys that I've coached come through my door that literally look like, I mean, they, I mean, literally I have had male models, like literally sign up for my programs that are nervous. They have like quirkiness in their personality. And it's like the girl might see them like, whoa, who's this guy? And once she start, once they start talking, they realize like, shit, this guy's like lacking confidence. 
He's socially awkward. Yeah, he's good looking, but you know, that's about it. So your looks can only take you so far. Yeah, they can kick open the door for you. Um, and many times they can work against you because then the girl gets suspicious. Like, oh, you look like you're kind of a player. You look like you're kind of like a womanizer or something. Right. You know, so sometimes it can work against you too. It's not like a bowl of cherries. Like, oh, once I have my looks, ah, free reign, free reign. All these chicks are just going to be all over me. I mean, I have a number of students like who, like literally their wives, their girlfriends, their LTRs had just left them. And these guys are good looking, lots of money. You know, got the Ferrari, got the exotic car, the big house. It's like, why did this girl leave? He's got everything. He's got the LMS. Why is she leave? Oh, because he's missing elements in his personality. Oh, he's missing character traits. Oh, he's missing some game, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've just seen too many examples otherwise, just because I've been coaching so long. So, I mean, when, you know, when I started to see that surface, I could kind of see their point. But in the same sense, because I've coached so many guys in real life, um, I know it's not, you know, it's not, it's not all just, you know, it's not all what they say it is. I mean, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions that they're, uh, they're leading guys towards. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's so hard to convince the guys. So I just find it's just yeah. so hard because they want to believe this because then they have an excuse for themselves why they're not, you know, overcoming their fears and why they're not having success in life. And it's, it, and, and I, I get it. I mean, but, you know, the thing that really opened up my eyes was one of one of my friends who who was this, you know, skinny Indian dude who just like like you would have thought, no way, this guy. And then he's just killing it. And you're like, what yeah. is going on here? And it's it's because he just had such solid game. And it's again, it's like, I don't know, I could tell the story and, and everyone's going, like, yeah, yeah, right, John. But I mean, if you see it, once you see it then you can't unsee it. Then you're like, okay, well, you know, especially me being like six foot three, you know, 240, you know, big guy. When, when I'm standing next to this guy and he's like getting attention, I'm like, what is going on? Here? Right, right, right. <laughs> Wait a minute here. And uh, yeah, but I guess you see enough examples. And, and like you said, uh, there's actually this movie. I can't, I was trying to think of the movie clip, but maybe you'll, maybe you know it, but it, it's such a good example. I should do a video on it, but I remember seeing it recently where these girls are at this pool. I think these older ladies and this, they see this guy studly looking just ripped guy walk up and then he uh -huh. goes to talk to him and he, he has this really like Hoosier uh, Hoosier or whatever Canadian accent. That's like just, yeah. And this high pitched voice and they just start laughing at him and they're like, <laughs> they had called him over and then they're like laughing at him because he, he yeah. appeared be this really strong masculine like you know good looking ripped dude but then as soon as they heard his voice and yeah. his and just the, and the way that he presented himself they're like it was just it was laughable yeah 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 i mean i used to game with a guy one of my wingmans for a couple of years back in the late 2000s was and this guy was a model he was like a french guy he had this french accent and just great shape and yeah. whenever we walk into a venue, it's like the girls automatically, I, I was invisible and they're like, like tunnel vision. But then once we get into set with the girls, yeah. um, that was a good thing he was good for. It's like, he was great for bringing like the set to the <laughs> But once we'd start interacting, I mean, it's funny how like the value like would shift from him onto me because I would just talk his looks away. I would quickly just talk his looks away. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, you know, he was he was almost feeling like, wow, you know, I'm just this DLB guy. Even though I was trying to teach him game, but he was he was somebody who just kind of bought into the fact that I'm good looking. I get laid every once in a while. That's good enough for me. He could have been so much more potent if he just kind of like learned some more game, but he didn't. He was just like relying on books. And because we went out together, um, I would I would take over the set. And it got to the point where he just stopped hanging out with me. Like literally he was like, I'm not hanging out with you anymore. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Yeah, it was like I just want to go do my own thing. I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> Let's see, I'll just uh, deal with this troll real quick. Oh uh, yeah, come down to San Diego. I will knock your bitch ass out. I'll do it for free, in fact. So, <laughs> um, but uh, but so, so okay, you, you gave your approach technique, which which I like. What um, what are, are some of the kind of the best things that the kind of tips that you could give guys? You know, I think a lot of guys today are really frustrated. Right. I, I see a, a huge amount of frustration. They feel like with Instagram, right, with OnlyFans, with dating apps, that women are more picky than ever. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they feel like cold approach is dead. 
what what do what do you tell these guys like what's the kind of best kind of advice you can give these guys for i mean there's a lot of guys that are that are virgins now that are in their you know late 20s 30s even yeah. even, even greater and they've given up i mean these, i get these emails all the time what's the what can these guys do what where where can they start what what can they do to you know to turn their life around do they have hope you know yeah, I mean, everybody has hope. Um, I've had like the biggest hard case newbies like come on my boot camp, and I've been able to get guys their first kiss clothes, their mm -hmm. first girlfriends. Um, have I've done that a number of times. It's really, you know, it just goes back to the individual wanting to at least start moving in life. Because the problem with a lot of these guys is they're just sitting at home and they're looking for the next excuse. And I mean, especially right now with COVID, you know how many guys are like, oh, I can't do anything. Got, you know, there's like COVID and lockdowns and all this. Yeah. Um, it's like, dude, you don't think I deal with that? I continue to go out. Um, I've been taking off to Vegas a lot lately, and I've just been doing like casino floor game because all the all of the uh, all of the clubs have been closed. I've just been picking up girls on the casino floor, and you know the fact that girls are like people are wearing masks now. They're like, oh, M, what about that? And it's like, dude, these are just more hurdles. I mean, they're temporary, but these are just more hurdles. But I mean, it really just starts with you pushing yourself out to like leave your house. I mean, Jesus Christ. So many guys are like, I don't know what they do at home all day. All they do is stay home. They watch the YouTube videos. They watch CNN. They watch all like, you know, they're like looking at all these uh, blogs and posts and IG. And it's like, dude, you got to start moving in life. I did a whole coaching video on this on my alpha male secrets channel, which is my backup channel talking about how um, as a man, you must keep moving in life. You have to keep moving around, get up, do something, you know, just exercise, go out for a walk, take your dogs out, go for a drive, you yeah. know, don't eat at home today, go to McDonald's, just get out of your house, start moving around, you know, don't stop stagnating at home. Um, and I get, I mean, I even have haters like going, how come you're always filming on the road? Why are you always in hotel rooms? I'm actually, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually at home right now, you haters. I'm at home. Okay. I'm at home right now. So you go. Right. right? I'm at home because I just got back from Vegas, but uh, it's because I take my own advice. I'm constantly moving in life. It keeps me awake. It keeps me alert and it keeps me in the zone. It just keeps me like constantly looking forward to the next day and constantly like whenever I see a hot girl, it makes me want to approach. But I can only imagine if I stayed home all day, if I was watching the mainstream news, if I was just playing video games all day, you know, eating at home, I was never leaving the house. And then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, I got to go out. And then I see a cute girl. Yeah, it'd be a little bit hard to be like, oh, hey, you, who are you? You know, it's a little bit harder when you're not, you're just stagnating constantly in life. You have to be moving. I agree. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. And that's just so many people don't want to take action. They're just, they're just, they're just watching, consuming content all the time, reading, not actually going out there and, and actually taking action where, where you're going to get the results. It's the same thing even in business. You know, there's so many parallels between game and business. It, it's crazy, you know, with, with marketing and the product and, and, uh, and the sales page, it's all the same, same skill set. And, and yeah. it's the same problem. You know, the guys, you can basically coach guys on game and business the exact same way almost. And it's because they're not taking action. That's a big, big thing that they're not doing. So, yeah. And I mean, even like in set with a girl, I mean, a lot of it is pumping or buying temperature, right? You got to like pump yeah. or buying temperature. Same with thing with customers. You got to pump their buying temperature to, in order to get them to buy from you. And I mean, if you can't even pump your own buying temperature, how can you pump some girl's buying temperature or you know, your customers buying temperature, you know, if you're in a job interview, you're, you know, your, your hiring managers buying temperature. It's really, it's really, really tough to do that. If you can't even get yourself in the state, you know, exactly. Let's see. We got Gilbert here. He says, most of my trouble with well, women was because I was lazy. Thanks for saving my life, Matt. Things get better. Guys, we're going to improve yourself and growing. Awesome. That's Back great. On, Gilbert. Yeah. So one thing I think as we will probably start wrapping up here, but one thing I want to address with you, and I think it, it's it's kind of important. I, I really want to get this message out here. And it's kind of the reason why I have you on my channel. I've had a lot of guys on my channel, uh, you know, because I'm going to get a lot of hate. A lot of guys that are like, gonna be like, oh, why'd you have Matt on your channel? Like, are you not part of our group or this group? Or and so, yeah. you know, I always tell guys, I'm on I'm on my team. I'm on the Bulldog mindset team, my team. Like I'm not in any like mid cow red, I don't care whatever your little fraternity is. Like I, I'm friends with a lot of guys and I'll invite anyone, 
But what's your take on this whole thing? Because I feel like it's almost like a divide and conquer. It's like we we are specifically like, guys, there's so many feuds that are going on. I think Donovan Sharp, actually, he just had a video where he was talking about this. And I was like, thank thank God that someone is finally mentioning this because yeah. I feel like a lot of guys, again, like I said, I, I totally – have a, a you know i don't have, I, I try not to talk shit to, to about anyone because right. we all have takes and everything but we're all guys trying to help other guys out here at the end of the day we have different philosophies and things what's your take on this whole like the infuting do you you know do you yeah. see what, what do you think about that whole thing yeah i think it's i i think it's really sad because right now um i mean nobody is helping us right we don't have anybody in our corner we don't have politicians in our corner we don't have government in our corner we don't have obviously the mainstream news in our corner hollywood late night talk show hosts they're not in our corner they're all against us so all we have right now in this manosphere is each other all we have is each other and this is the reason why you know i mean personally like you i refuse to call anybody out by name anybody i have a problem with Anybody that I, I feel like, yeah, we need to have a discussion. I mean, if I want to, if it gets to that point, I mean, if it were me, you know, the way I was raised, the way I was taught, the way I was mentored was I pull that person aside in private. Right? That's how I, man uh, Yeah. You pull, I mean, that's how men handle things, right? You pull that person aside in private because right now, I mean, the, the size of your channel, the size of my channel and the size of a lot of these guys' channels, we have these gigantic audiences. You know, I mean, for what we're teaching, it's a pretty gigantic audience. I mean, we're not doing like prank videos where we have millions of subscribers, but we're trying to add value to guys' lives. And we're trying to, to really protect and build our community and really help build and rebuild men again. And yeah. um, I always look at it like, if I do this, is it helping the community or is it hurting the community? So if I call somebody out by name, it's like I now I'm creating drama. I'm mm -hmm. manufacturing drama, which is why I refuse to do it. I mean, guys have called me out like they've done like literally like some pretty, pretty nasty uh, like videos. And it's like, you know, in a lot like over half of it is not even true. It's like over half of it, it could easily be explained away. Right. But as it says in the Bible, it's it says that uh, everybody, everybody's story sounds good until you hear the other side. Yeah. yeah. The other side. But Again, to your point, um, I would pull that person aside and have a talk with them in private. And even if we can't hash it out, I would still want to keep it between me and that person because you don't want to air your dirty laundry just for the manosphere. Like, look, look at what this guy's doing, you know, because people obviously follow that guy. If you're talking about him, people are following him. People respect him. And all you're going to do is divide the community. You're just dividing the community, you know, no different than look, like what politicians do, right? They just divide, divide, divide. And um, so, yeah, that's just, you know, I mean, that's just should be like a code of honor, but that's just part of just having good character, right? You just, if you have a problem with somebody, you got to pull them aside and, and understand where they're coming from. It's like, not everybody has evil intentions and trying to screw you, you know, it's like, maybe there's a reason for this, you know? So it's like, seek, what is, uh, what does Stephen Covey say? Uh, seek to understand first before being understood. So I mean, even the guys who have attacked me, I've kind of like, okay, I, I can kind of see where they're coming from. You know, it's kind of lame the way you did it, but I, I see your point, point taken. But then they continue to like do the same thing to try to provoke a response, you know? And it's like, dude, I mean, I live what I teach. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't bother with that. I mean, it's just not where I want to divert my energy. I mean, I mean, why divert like, you know, like an hour or two of content towards somebody that a disagreement I'm having with them when I could take those two hours and pump out like a dozen coaching videos, high value coaching videos that'll be up on YouTube for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, maybe even a hundred years helping guys. I'd rather do that because a hundred years from guy, a hundred years from now, guys are not going to remember like, what was this little squabble they had going on? They're not going to care. They're going to be like, what is this little bitch shit? You know, and really it just, it, it, it just mirrors back on you when you do stuff like that, right? It just kind of just reflects back on you because everything's a self-projection, right? Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that perspective. I, I, I had a feeling that you would you would think that way because I hadn't seen any hate videos on your on your channel calling yeah. anyone out, and that's a, that's a good thing. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm hoping that we can get more guys – uh, on board with this and and just and, and again and I think part of the reason why it's so valuable is because 
we have a lot of different philosophies, right? I, in, in, I mean, I don't like MGTOW. I don't like the philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. I, but I, I'm not going to call out specific people. I don't like black pill. I don't like that philosophy. I think it's a destructive philosophy, but yeah. it doesn't mean that like we shouldn't let's okay. So someone who's MGTOW wants to come on the channel and talk about it. I won't even say debate. Let's discuss. Let's, let's see where we, where we meet and where we disagree because maybe I'll learn something and, and they'll learn something and, and we'll, we'll sort of advance things because that's how it was. I think, you know, again, going back to the good old days, in the forums and stuff, it was like, there was like, you know, back and forth, but that's how things progressed to where they were. It's like, you learned from that because it was like, okay, well this, you know, you have this perspective. And I think the more that we have guys that are sharing their perspectives, getting on streams that even have different viewpoints and, and discussing things, you know, you could call it a debate, I guess, if you want, the more that we all kind of learn and, and grow from that, as opposed to just dismissing people, if they're not in our camp, you know, it's like yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, that's, that's how you actually, make forward progress is you, you hear different viewpoints. You have a, a, a discussion like a man instead yeah. of, you know, backstabbing and, and bitching and calling names. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that just comes from, you know, kind of like sinking in this low vibrational state where you just, I mean, it's no different than wanting to eat, you know, like French fries and onion rings at two in the morning. I mean, you just sink in this lower conscious state and you, you just lose your ability to communicate on a, just a man to man level. Right. And just, you know, just reach out to the guy rather than stay in this like ego protection mode. Like, oh, my faction is right. Your faction is wrong. You, this is why, you know, your faction's lame and let's bash this faction. And it's like, dude, we're all in the manosphere. I mean, everybody can take snippets from different areas of the manosphere and learn. It's like, you don't need to like really bash anybody. Um, and I mean, I'm a hardcore capitalist. The way I think about it is just put your best work out there and people exactly. will vote for their feet. If they like your shit, they will show up at your door. If they don't, they won't. You don't have to run this smear campaign on your competitor or somebody else on a different channel to try to pull views to yourself. You know, it's like in the end, that just never bodes well. I mean, it just, you know, just put your best value out there, put your best content out there and let the market give you feedback. Don't yeah. worry about what this guy's doing or that guy's doing or that guy's doing. Just worry about yourself. Yeah. You know, just focus on yourself. So no, I, I totally agree. So guys, make sure you go over right now. There's a link in the description below. Uh, check out Matt's channel, 33 Secrets. Uh, click the link, go subscribe over there. He's got really good content. You know, like I said, I've been watching his content for, for a long time. Finally, you know, I, I had it on my list. I was like to, to invite him on, on the channel and I'm, I'm glad I did. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, you know, we're, we're out here trying to help men to become better men. And, you know, and, you know, I know that pickup gets a, a bad rap. I know even a lot of you guys that follow me, you're like, you know, anti pickup stuff, but, but, it's, but understand, you know, that what the purpose of it is, is it's, it's not to be like a sleaze bag and manipulate women. It's, it's to be better men and to develop yourself and overcome your fear. You know, and I, and I, I can definitely endorse Matt's content because his content supports that as well. So appreciate it. Cool. All right, All right guys. Take care. Thanks again, Matt. Thank you very much. Go to my channel, subscribe, jump into seven months, seven months of mastery. And if not, just subscribe to my channel. Good enough. Right. Take care. All right.